Đây. Also known as the four quarters of life. Four quarters of life. Financial game. Now, when it comes to some games, when you think about basketball, football, it's broken up into quarters. But in the financial game, you can also break it down into quarters as well. What do I mean? Well, if you know that certain ages in life, or if you knew that certain ages in life to be represented by quarters, I think you will play those ages a little bit different. So let's go ahead and just number these quarters real quick. Just to paint a picture. So this first quarter obviously is the first quarter. This is gonna call it Q1, just for, just for speed. Cause I want this training to be short and sweet. I don't wanna keep you too long. So let's just call it quarter number one. We're gonna call this Q2, AKA the second quarter. And so on. If you're taking notes, you can follow along because I want you to get the, the understanding because everybody is in a quarter right now. If you're listening to my voice, you're playing a financial game. The question is, are you playing a financial game to win? And you will know by the things that I share if you're playing the game to win. And it's okay if you're in a position to where you're like, wow, I'm nowhere near where I need to be. That's the importance of this college. That's the importance of my econ. That's the importance of you coming to training. Because somebody is not on training tonight. In fact, it's a lot of somebody's that are not on training tonight. It's a lot of somebody's who are not tuning in to something that can help further them financially. They're tuning into a game for real. They're watching a live game on TV, watching other people with money get money. People who have already made money, they continue to make money off of the people who are watching and playing the wrong game. But the fact that you're here is okay. So even though you may not be on track per se, you at least here on training so you can get on track. And that's what it's all about. So in the first quarter, it's all represented by age ranges. Each quarter represents an age range. Quarter number one represents the age range of 25 to 35. 25 to 35. That's quarter number one. I'm gonna slide that over about right here. 25 to 35 is quarter number one. Type in the chat if you can guess what, what age range is quarter number two? What age range do you think is quarter number two? If quarter number one is 25 to 35, what age range is quarter number two? All right, I'm sure you, I'm sure you guessed it. 35 to 45. So quarter number two is 35 to 45. Type in the chat. If you're following along, what age range is quarter number three? Forty-five to fifty-five. And what age range do you think is quarter number four? Type in the chat. What age range do you think is quarter number four? On so the financial game, these are the four quarters. Why is that important? Now, see, of course, you can start playing the financial game a lot earlier than twenty-five, but most people don't. Most people don't really start getting serious about building wealth and tapping into their finances, at least in the time frames of most of us growing up. Most people aren't serious about their finances until their mid twenties, thirties, and that's really you having a, a, a solid job. You may have a, a a roof over your head to where you're paying your own bills. Your financial game is typically starting in the first quarter between the ages of twenty five and thirty five. Some people start earlier. You know, I had my first apartment when I was nineteen, so. Or really 18, but you know, 19 officially. So some people start early, but I was still playing the wrong game at that time. And most people don't start getting serious or at least really thinking about them fending for self and taking care of themselves into the ages of 25 to 35. Beyond that, in quarter number two, people really start getting a little bit more serious because they're like, okay, you know, I crossed the 30 mark, I'm past 35, you know, heading towards 40. People start really thinking about it a little more serious, thinking about their career choice, thinking about if they made the right choice, thinking about if they need to pivot, thinking about if they're on track to doing certain things financially. You start really looking at it on quarter two. And then quarter three, 
starts to get a little bit more serious. You start looking and thinking about that R word, known as retirement. You start wondering, okay, am I on track? Am I on pace? Is the Zao right now going to position me to retire comfortably? And then quarter four, it really starts to get a little shaky because sometimes they're thinking, okay, you know, I need to do something. I don't know exactly what I need to do, but I definitely need to do something to position myself to not have to work for the rest of my life. You see, some people work all of their life, but they're not positioning themselves to win the financial game, and they find themselves not being able to retire at all. If you know my perspective, Retirement is not based on an age. It's based on money. Retirement was never based on age. It was always based on money. We were just sold the idea that you had to retire by the time you were at age 65. And they play with the numbers. Sometimes it's 60, sometimes it's 62, sometimes it's 65. They're trying to push it to 70. If they can push you to work in long, they will. But you have to get in control of your finances so you can then, when you choose to retire, now, I want to tell you this. You can retire when you be necessary, but it is going to take some work. And a lot of times it's going to take some extra work in order to make that happen. Otherwise, you have to retire when they want you to retire. And would you rather retire on your terms or their terms? I'm sure that's a unanimous, your terms. Now, we got these four quarters. And when you're playing the game, especially when you think about basketball, think about football. You see, in those games, they have an extra quarter sometimes. And that extra quarter, our OT. When they go beyond the fourth quarter, it's a tie. They have to go into what's known as OT. What does OT stand for in the sports world? Type it in the chat. What does OT stand for in the sports world? Yvette got it right. Jamisha got it right. No, Jamisha was going to get it right. The sports mom, of course. So everybody got it right. Down from the birthday queen all the way down to Reggie. Overtime. Absolutely. Now, in the financial game, and don't answer this if you've already seen us do this financial game before. In the financial game, what does OT stand for? Type it in the chat. If you've already seen us do this years ago, don't answer. But everybody else who's new to this presentation, what does OT stand for in the financial game? If you don't know, just say, I don't know. Just say, IDK. Say, I don't know. You can make a good guess. Okay. Somebody keeping it real. Okay. Extra cash, I don't know. Okay. See, in the game of sports, the financial game, or well, the game of sports, OT stands for overtime. But in the financial game, once you make it past the fourth quarter, once you make it past A65, if you're not careful, and I'm not going to say that it solidifies what I'm about to say. But if you're not careful, your OT can stand for out of time. See, that's why we go so hard and really want to get people to understand the power in my econ, the power of what you possess, the power of why you should keep your monthly membership active. It's not just so you can pay a monthly membership. No, we want to position you so that that monthly membership pays for itself. And it's tax deductible, and it's bringing you in more cash flow, and it's positioning you to hit your financial goals before you reach OT. Then the financial game means out of time. Now, this is not to say that once you pass 65 that you can't still hit certain financial goals. There are people who have created success stories, and they've been starting their first business until past 67 and became multi multi millionaire. So it's not to say that it's the end all be all. However, you do have to be thinking and positioning yourself to not have to do that in OT. What can you be doing now while you're in the second quarter, while you're in the third quarter, or even if you're in the fourth quarter? What can you be doing now to position yourself over the next five years, 10 years that can position you to be on track financially before you're OT? Out of time. Now, this is what I, I let's put some numbers to it because now we got an idea of what the quarters are. 
we got an idea. Now, this is what you got to understand. Sometimes people don't realize how much money passes through their hands. This is everybody. Most people make in their lifetime over a million dollars. Over a million dollars. And I'm proving to you. So let's just say, for example, just, just some simple math. Not math, just some, just some simple math. Let's just say you may, most people work at least 40, 40 years. 40 years. Most people work at least 40 years. And let's just say you made on the low end, or just minimum, $25,000 a year, minimum. If you made $25,000 minimum per year for 40 years on average. Some years in your earlier years, you might've made more, might've made less, you know, it might've you know, pivoted depending on what happened in life. But on average, say you made $25,000 per year. If you take $25,000, you multiply that by 40, you've made a million dollars. Now, I use this example because many people make well over $25,000. So I'm making 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 plus. So you touched a million dollars a lot sooner than a person who might average $25,000 a year. So most people have had a million plus to go through their hands over their lifetime. It's just a matter of what did they do with that million dollars? Did they allow too many people in their pockets that they didn't even know was in their pockets that robbed them of their wealth? That's what my econ slides in because we know that most people are overpaying in so many different areas that if they just understood how to give less money away, they can tap into that million dollars and win this financial game. So let's just put it this way. So if most people make $25,000 a year. We're just using low numbers, just, you know, just to keep it simple, keep it plain. Most people would make at least $25,000 a year. And let's just say that they work that first quarter, 10 years, 25 to 35, that represents 10 years. Through this 10-year career, they've made $250,000. They've made a quarter million dollars in the first quarter. On the low end. What if they save at least 10% of that? That would be $25,000. Now, the reason why I point this out is because experts say that you should be at least investing 10% of your income. Now, I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but at least if you know the number, you have something to strive to. So that way, if you know the number, you can aim towards getting towards 10%. Even if it means you start out investing 1%, then you realize, you know what, I can double that and go to 2%. You know what, I can double that and go 4%. You know what, I can double that and go to 8% and before you know it, you're investing 10% of in your income. Why is that important? Because you want to be putting your money towards something that's going to make that money multiply. See, most of us have been taught to buy things, but very few of us have been taught to invest the money. See, it feels good. It gives us a level of instant gratification when we buy stuff. It's just a natural thing. Sometimes endorphins are released just by shopping alone. You just feel good buying stuff, spending the money. But if you can switch that mentality and get that same excitement by investing, knowing, oh, I'm putting my money somewhere where it has the potential to multiply. I'm putting my money somewhere where it has the potential to grow. I'm putting my money somewhere to where it acts as a seed that can later bring me a harvest. That's what money is. That's what money is meant to be. Money is meant to be a seed. Not you just imagine, imagine a farmer, and I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Imagine a farmer taking all of their seeds and just bartering with the seeds, just you know, giving it to whoever in exchange for some poles, in exchange for somebody else's food, in exchange for a vacation, a travel, a car. And they didn't have any new seeds to plant at all. Pretty soon they wouldn't have any crop. Pretty soon they wouldn't have any harvest. That's how you got to view money. If you're just giving away your money to buy things, then you're going to look up in the fourth quarter and you're not going to have a harvest. You're going to be out of time with no harvest. But what you try to, what you want to do is position yourself to say, okay, in each quarter, I need to get myself to where I have 10% of my money at least working for me. Now, if you're not there, of course, you got to play catch up. But this is just an example. So say in quarter one, the goal should be, and this is on the low end, just you know, just something to paint a picture. The goal should be to have 
25000 somewhere working for you, some type of investment account, some type of mutual fund, an ETF, which is one of my favorites, some type of index fund, have 25000 working for you somewhere to get you on track to winning a financial game. Because if that 25000 is somewhere working, listening to you to get a return on your investment, investment, positioning your money to double within that quarter, you're positioning yourself to have more than a million dollars by the time you retire. You're positioning yourself to be able to retire comfortably and live off of the investment. So each quarter, the number goes up. Let's go to the second quarter. Second quarter, if 25,000 is the amount you wanna have working for you in the first quarter, how much money do you think you need to have working for you in the second quarter? Drop it in the chat. How much money do you think you need to have working for you in the second quarter? If 25,000 is the amount you should have working for you in some type of investment in the first quarter, what do you think you should have working for you in the second quarter? Go to the chat, 50K, 50K. I don't, 50K, the number doubles. I'm gonna have 50,000 working for you. Why? Because that's 10% of your income. Now, this is based on a person who makes 25,000. If your money, if you make more, then this number increases. Because if this person, if this was an example of a person making 50,000, a year, over the course of 10 years, they would have earned 500,000, which means they wanna have at least 50,000 working for them. Why? Because a person who makes 25,000 versus a person who makes 50,000, they might have a different quality of living. They might have a different level of things that they have started to acquire. They might have a high mortgage. They might have higher car notes, higher expenses. So you want to have more money invested. Why? Because when it's time to retire, in order to maintain the same lifestyle that you've created for yourself based on your current income, you need more money invested so that it can still allow you to maintain that level of living. So if you made 100000 over the course of 10 years, you made a million dollars, which means that you want to have $100,000 working for you in this first quarter. So I want you to make sure you, as you're taking notes and you're thinking about this, you make it applicable to you. I'm just looking at the scenario of a $25,000 wage earner for a year and say, oh, okay, you know, I'm not that far off. I'm not on track. Well, you got to think about how much you earn annually and make each quarter 10% of that. Now, most people will look right here and say, you know what, I'm not on track. Even in comparison to a person who makes $25,000 a year, I'm in quarter two and I don't have $50,000 working for me at this time or tied up into some type of asset, such as real estate, you know? So when I think of investing, investments, it can be tied up into certain investment stocks, ETLs, mutual funds, but it can also be tied to real estate. Do you have equity of 50,000 plus in something based on this form of income? If the answer is no, we got some catching up to it. That's what my econ is all about. So let's proceed. So if you knew that quarter two, you need to have $50,000 working for you in this example. How much do you need to have working for you in quarter number three? If you're following along and doing the math, then you know that it should be $75,000. And in quarter four, how much money do you need to have working for you? Simple math, nothing complex. Drop it in the chat. How much money do you need working for you in quarter number four? Absolutely. 100 thou out working for you during these time frames. Now, if you had $25,000 working for you in the first quarter, by the time you're in the second quarter, that $25,000 is not just $25,000. You've been able to experience some growth, been able to multiply that money. So you might be beyond quarter two based on you continuing to invest, percentage of your money, 10% preferably. And now that money is growing. So when you're in the third quarter, it's just compounding. The sooner you start investing, the better. Because compound interest is something that allows your money to multiply and it multiplies even faster over time. The later you start, the less momentum you're able to create, but it does not mean you cannot win the financial game because you can still get some great rates of return in those last quarters. You just have to be more strategic about it. it just, you just have to be more strategic and you have to double down on all of the cash flow 
opportunities that are that are available to you. You may have to make extra income from a business. You want to make sure that you're making extra income from a business so you can minimize your taxes. I didn't even talk about taxes. There are a lot of people make a million dollars, but a lot of times that's gross, meaning that's not what they took home because you had other entities with their hands in your pocket. The government taking tax money, banks taking interest on the money that you borrow, big business taking money because they make you feel as though you have to participate in all of the holidays. Inflation, taking money because they are able to raise prices on certain things and that cuts into your paycheck. It's usually silent, but that's the silent income killer. We got all of these things that's digging into your pocket, which is why my econ is saying, listen, if you're not careful, you're going to lose this financial game because there's so many other people who got their hands in your pocket. And if you're not taking the idea of you keeping more of your cash flow seriously, you're going to look up and you're going to be in the fourth quarter. And next thing you know, it's OT. All because you didn't minimize your taxes. You were scared to. You're scared to minimize your taxes. Scared to adjust your W-4. Scared to do business and earn income. Scared of rejection. Scared of somebody telling you no. Even though you knew you had a solution that can help people better their credit, better their finances, get out of debt, travel for the low. You scared to share with them. But on the flip side, your fear just led you into failing the financial game. On the flip side, your fear led you to not having another stream of income that can turn into some residual income, some passive income. On the flip side, your fear just stopped you from having a ton of tax deduction that would allow you to keep more of your money. And the more money you keep, the more money you can invest and the better you can position yourself to win the financial game and have the right amount of money invested no matter what quarter you in. See, my econ wasn't created accidentally. It was strategically created to position people to understand the rules of the wealthy that's not taught in schools, the things they don't necessarily want you to know, because they think that these are the things, when they hear the terminology, this is the stuff that the wealthy do. They think just because it's framed up as, this is what the wealthy does, the wealthy doesn't pay taxes, or the wealthy may pay zero taxes, they think they can't play that game just because they don't put themselves or consider themselves well. well I'm here to tell you, if you're working a job, you can play the same game the wealthy are playing. Because we live in America, and America is designed for business owners. It's two different type of you know categories that people fall in. It's the people, the haves and the have-nots. The people who have a business, they get the benefit from over four hundred tax deductions, and the people who have not a business, and they lose and pay majority of the taxes. The people who work jobs pay more taxes than the people who have businesses. Even though the people who work jobs may make less money, they pay more in taxes. But you have to play this game. Otherwise, this game is playing you. So these are the four quarters. These are the things that you need to wrap around your mind and, 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 and factor in your numbers. Factor in your numbers. If you make 75000 you make 60000 these numbers represent 10% of your annual income and how you need to have that money working. Are you on track? For most people, the answer is, no, I'm not. So for most people, it's a reality check. For most people, it's, you know, it scares them and makes them realize, oh, I'm, I'm not on track. Because what you can't do is just depend on Social Security, thinking that Social Security is going to be the thing that takes care of you. Last time I checked, people who work jobs that later end up, ended up depending on Social Security ended up living off way less money than they were earning. So it was a, a bit of a tight struggle because now they're having to make do with what the Social Security is paying them. And then in the ages of 65 and beyond, many times they need more money because it's certain things they may be dealing with that cost more money. So you don't want to put yourself in a position to only depend on Social Security. Now, some people do have jobs that pay into a pension or create a pension form and create some type of retirement income. But not a lot of jobs had it. A lot of jobs got rid of it. Sometimes they just have a 401k. They replaced it with a 401k knowing that most people weren't going to pay attention to it. So people pay into their 401k. But if you have no clue where your 401k is invested in, then guess what? Then you still can find yourself losing a financial gain because they can be investing in a losing asset. An asset that's not growing, doesn't have a bright future. It might have sounded good, but it wasn't good. So you have to get financially literate to understand, okay, these are some things that you know I may want to consider investing in. Let me take a look and see where is my 401k going? Quick story about Angie, she 
had her money that was invested in the 401k, took a look at it. Once we start understanding the rules of the financial game, and we realize, ah, that money is investing in something that's just kind of stagnant, not really doing anything. So we learned some knowledge, took heed to some information that we learned and, and redirected those funds and put it somewhere else. It started doing much better. We start putting it in things like REITs. We ain't talking about REITs, real estate investment trust. And those REITs start doing better, doing much better than what it was doing just sitting in the 401k. So many of you may have a 401k, but a lot of people, their 401k is doing horribly right now because they didn't understand how to maneuver it. I mean, it can't overcome whatever it's going through. But the fact is, when you're at age 65 and you're like, yeah, I've been investing in my 401k for 40 years. If you didn't know what it was doing all of those 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you might look up and think you got enough to retire. It's $60,000 in there. How long can you live off of $60,000 if you made $30,000 a year? That's only going to carry you for two years. Then you're back applying for another job, aka a retirement job. So you have to get an understanding. It might sound like another language at times as it relates to learning and investment, it may be overwhelming. I promise you, it's a lot of things that you once didn't know that you figured out, you learned, you made it through, overcame. It was overwhelming and then it got easy. It didn't get easy, you just got better. It didn't get easy, you just got smarter. It didn't get easy, you just got wiser. You plugged into things that elevated your mind, so then the next time you look at it, it made more sense. The same can be true with investing. So I just want you to understand the financial game that we're playing whether we like it or not. Once you understand the quarters of life that you're in, whether you like it or not, and then just understand that it's something that you can do about it. And the answer is my income for many people. Personal financial success. Personal financial success. Now, if you want to speed up the process in order to hit these goals, then we highly recommend you maximize on every single strategy that my econ has available. First strategy being the W-4. If you haven't touched it, Touch it. Don't be scared of it. Stay plugged in so you can have guidance and have comfort in knowing that you're going to be okay on a year by year basis. Take an understand or have an understanding that extra cash flow can be going towards you getting out of debt. Because we didn't even talk about the debt that people may owe that keeps them from being in position to win a financial game. But my econ strategies position you to get rid of the debt faster than you would have. Better your credit. If you haven't gone through the credit system to position you to heighten your score, make that happen because that helps you lower your interest rate. And if you do have to borrow money for a car loan or home, whatever the case may be, you at least pay less than most because the name of the game is to keep more of your money so you can invest that money and build wealth. If you're not building a business inside of my econ, it's no pressure. We make the business our option. But the reason why we encourage you to be open to building a business not only to help others, especially to help others. Of course, we want to help others put other people in a position to win, but we also want you to win and put you in a position to win the financial game because another stream of income allows you to say, you know what, I made an extra $50 this week. I made an extra $100 this week. Let's see if I can do that on a week-to-week -week basis and then I start making an extra $1,000 a month or whatever the case may be. You're positioning yourself to earn more income but that's not even the, the big thing. The bigger part is if you're making an additional stream of income, you open up a ton of tax deductions that can offset your job income. And I know you've heard us say this over and over again, but it offsets your job income. So even though you may fall into a certain tax bracket at your job, you having a business and operating your business with the intent to make a profit and making some money. And making my econ have to send you a 1099 at the end of the year because you made over $600, over $1,000, over $6,000. Now you qualify your tax deductions even more. And each year it just gets better and better. And you get a better understanding of how some of the money you're spending right now. Most of you are probably watching this on a cell phone. The difference between me and somebody else who does not have a business is the fact that I will get to write off my cell phone and they would. Or if you had a business and I don't, you get to write off your cell phone. Certain miles that you drive, travel, especially if you got the travel portal, the elevation travel. Now when you're traveling, the fact that you had the ability to sell travel, you position your travel to be 100% tax deductible, up to 100% tax deductible on travel you were gonna do anyway. 
but you're strategically doing it because my econ has created a system that strategically positions you to win the financial game. So do not take this lightly. Don't ever think that your monthly membership is a bill. It's an investment. And the investment is designed to help you tap in and win the financial game. If you want to know how to start winning the financial game, you definitely want to make sure that you get very familiar with even if you've seen it, went through it, do it again. I was talking to a king who is a part of the team, and he hadn't gone through royaltymovement.com just yet. He went through some of it. I take that back. He had already gone through some of it, but not in full. He went through the lessons four, lessons five. He was like, man, I'm going to be honest. I wish I would have gone through this sooner. Because it, it turned on some light bulbs. He started to understand, oh, this is why I want to increase my cash flow so I can get out of debt faster and position myself to build wealth with my own money. This is why I want to make sure I have an understanding of what my debt freedom date is, my retirement date is. You know what? If I stay on this track, I can retire 10 years earlier than they want me to. Because again, retirement is not based on age, it's based on money, what you do with it, and that's what we want to position you to do. So don't feel bad no matter what quarter you're in. I don't care if you're in the fourth quarter and you feel like you're getting close to OT. You just got to get in motion. And don't let your ego or your pride or the fear get in the way of you moving forward and taking the necessary steps in order to win this financial game. That's all I got for this part of the training. Next up, we're going to talk about the building, but we want to open up with questions. Do you have any questions about anything that I've said or anything pertaining to my econ as a whole, credit, not limited to anything in particular? And if, uh, Queen, if you're in a position to do so, if you see some questions in the chat, let me know. I'm, I'm opening up the chat as well. But if you have any questions, now's a good opportunity to ask any question that you have, whether it's about tonight's training or anything my econ. And okay, I got you on the chat. Okay, perfect. All right, I see Markel say he can't wait to make another stream of income. That's right. Plug all the way in, King. Plug all the way in. Can't, I believe this is King. I apologize if it's not, but plug all the way in and, and take action. Any questions? A question is a bad question. Any feedback? Did you did you learn anything? Was it a, a aha moment, a wake up call? Was it, you know, did it paint a picture for you? Are you doing your numbers in your head and understanding what you need to do? Hey, I would like to just um, add something, Marcus. Okay. And y'all, I remember when we first did this presentation, when we did this on, I think it was on a Facebook Live, and the feeling that I had just looking at the numbers. And the crazy thing is, we were still in quarter number one. We were in our 20s looking at this information like, man, we got to do what we got to do. So I just wanted to say, y'all, in your 20s and 30s, especially if you own here in your 20s and your 30s, do what you got to do. Like, do what you got to do so that you can build a really good life for yourself and for your family. Like, I couldn't imagine being in some of the later quarters still having some of the financial issues that you have in your 20s and in your 30s. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's really an eye opener. You know, imagine in your 20s and in your 30s or even your, your early 40s, you're applying everything that Marcus just went over. You're really applying all of the, the tools that we have. I remember when we first went through the debt elimination tool and we got our debt freedom date. You know how many people don't know when they will be debt free? They just feel like, oh, it's debt. I'm just gonna, you know, have debt until I die. I'm gonna die with it. That's a horrible mentality. You know, imagine getting your credit right early. Imagine, you know, becoming debt free. Imagine putting investments in place where money is working for you. Now, when you're in your 40s, when you're in your 50s, you can travel, you can live life. You don't owe nobody nothing. You have assets. You have multiple streams of income. You have something you can pass down to your children and your children's children. And it's just crazy that we were introduced to my econ in our 20s. And this just made so much sense. We didn't make any excuses about why we couldn't make money. We didn't make any excuses about why we couldn't hop on trainings or why we couldn't just dive into the system and start plugging in our numbers in our 20s. And now we're in our 30s and we're doing so much better than 
than so many other people our age and much, much older. So I, I just wanted to say that y'all just really apply. You have the tools. Don't be that person that sleeps on my econ and then you regret it. We have so many people who come back years later and say, now I get what you were trying to say. Don't be that person. Dive in and really see what these tools are all about because it really will change your life.